Now let's uh, let's bring Amina Khan, the uh, BBC apprentice, a business owner, a great entrepreneur, an amazing woman, very inspirational. And mm. I've been following Amina also in social media, not only from the media presence. Uh, in fact, gave her a big, uh, big uh, authority in her industry, and now. Uh, I guess this has been a great impact for your business as well, Amina. But I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to bring you to speak in our community, not only as a successful woman, as a, as a star now in, well, in your field, but also uh, to show uh, your determination because you didn't get this success because you are a great pharmacist only because, you know, we see many people are great experts in what they do. But is that enough? What I've been uh, seeing while following you is like, you never stop. You are Yes, you are a great expert, but you do not let your expertise to, a, let's say, an agent or a social media manager to go and do your social media. You do it yourself. You didn't ask somebody else and say, hey, can you can you present me, represent me here for the media? Because I am the pharmacist. I am the scientist. Uh, mm. I stay behind the scenes. You do my PR. In fact, you became successful because you decided to become the face of your business. So tell us a little bit about your beginnings. How did you get noticed? And how did you manage to grow uh, your business into a seven-figure business? Thank you so much, Mirella, for your kind words, honestly. Hello, everyone on the chat on, the, on this call here today. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I'm i actually excited to talk about this. So how did I grow my business? When I was 27, 28 years old, I am 33 now. I just turned 33 last week. Um, I had very bad acne, and I've never had acne my entire life at gleaming skin even on my wedding day I didn't even get any facials done so when I had acne because I was working like very long hours in the pharmacy very it was very pressurizing I knew I had to stop and I've always wanted to be my own boss and I thought this is my time now to take things into my own hands formulate something use my own knowledge and make some skincare but Bear in mind, I had no business background, no business skills. My mom, my mom's a housewife. She's always been a full-time housewife. My dad's a car salesman, so nothing in the background there. Um, but I knew I, I had to have social media to promote my products. And I couldn't afford these influencers charging 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 pounds a video. They, they, I was all oh, Facebook ads of 50 pound an hour. I couldn't afford that. So I thought, okay, I sat at my kitchen table. I said, what should I name myself? And then after a lot of thinking, I said, okay, Amina the pharmacist. Made the Instagram account, put a post up, got three likes. I was like, okay, three likes, something, that's fine. And then I kept posting every day, every day, every day. There was not a day I did not post. I posted about my journey. I posted about my acne. I posted about resonating with other people with the same health concerns and there was people that were like connecting with me and I was connecting back I replied to every single message I got there was not a message in my inbox that was never replied to that was one of my I'd say I'm proud of because it's very hard to keep in connection with people that are following you but I always reply to them I have threads of people messaging me I can't do that now because of, yes, I have so many messages coming in. But this is how I how I started as. Um, and then the following grew, the following grew. And then TikTok came about just before COVID hit. Everybody said, don't go on TikTok. It's just a dancing app. Don't go on TikTok. It's just, you know, for kids. And I thought, no, TikTok is an app where it's another app. It's a, I want to be omnipresent. I want to be shown everywhere. I'm going to go in there and put an educational video up, right? It did okay, got 30 likes. I was like, let me put another video up. Kept putting another video up. Every day, I did not stop. And I did everything organically, never had a social media manager. I did my own editing, my own music, my own research, how to make a video more aesthetic, how to make a video get more engagement. 
learn more okay education was the key here you keep learning you keep learning as i learned my videos got better they it went more vi it went viral at one point and then one night i got twenty thousand followers because that video i put all my collection of all my mistakes and my best bits together and it just went viral that was experience that was my but that was me building my experience over time um by posting every day um if i was posting every once a week i wouldn't get that experience um bear in mind posting every day is a full-time job it's very very hard so, so uh, what is the lesson what we are receiving here is like your job is not just to be a good expert or to create a good product your job is to be mm. the face of that business uh, to mm. be the face of that product to be yeah. to, to be to advocate for it to present exactly. it to be out there and make sure that uh you are um articulating it properly you are standing for it you love it you it you sh i mean you have it's like your baby so exactly. that's why i really love your story and you didn't need to be great from the very beginning no you, you were not excellent at the beginning and nobody needs to be excellent it just needs consistency and you committed to that consistency now, yeah. did you have any fear of what other people are going to say? Any fear of judgment? Because before I started this conversation with you, I tested with my community. What is the biggest uh, obstacle or the biggest challenge that people face and they get stuck and they do not uh, uh, put themselves in, in social media? And they were mentioning um, fear of judgment, being shy, privacy. So... Uh, was any of these issues an issue for you at the beginning? Um, so, yes, I didn't tell my friends and family. I started an Instagram page. I was, it is honestly, it's a reasonable, you know, it, you know, thought like, oh God, what are they going to say about me? Um, I started it and if they found me, they found me. Um, but I know in, within my heart that social media was going to be the route to the success of my business. And if I had stopped, thinking what would other people think that would really i would never not be where i am today i wouldn't at the moment at tiktok i have about two hundred sixty thousand followers and i started that from scratch on instagram i have about eighty seven thousand followers organic like people say they buy followers i have never uh, you check my engagement i've never ever bought followers um but yeah no it, you are worried when you start that when you put your face out and the hardest thing is that people online can be a bit horrible, people that you don't know, but you got to take it in the chin. you got to be like, I'm here for my business. I want my business to grow. And I'm not here for those people. And you have to have that mindset. It's all in here. Everything is in here, the mindset. Keep going strong and just follow your path. Just stop refraining away from it. I love it. I am here for my business. I am not here for people who are going to judge me. And now the question is, ladies, if you are, who's running our business uh, in this room? By the way, put it into the chat if you're running your own business. And if you are running your own business, you know what? That should be your number one priority. Yeah. The number one thing that you need to worry about is your business. If yeah. you uh, occupy your time and you uh, invest your energy, uh on thinking what other people are going to think and no. how i'm going to be judged that's not an investment in your business no that is you're taking away from your business so the no. number one what the the other lesson here is the number one priority is your business and no. if there is something that you have identified that is helping your business and you're not doing it no. it's like you are damaging it one yeah. thing that everybody now is talking about is social media, it helps your business. Mm -hmm. So you know this is the way to go and you do not do it. That means that you have intentionally chosen not to do it because you don't want to grow your business. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. So Amina, I am loving this conversation. So great. So what, what are the benefits uh, that you started seeing as a result of becoming popular now in social media? So when I started my social media, a fun fact is that I actually made... <laughs> so people think the more followers you have, the more money you make. That is incorrect. Yes, it makes you look good on social media. But when I had around 3,000 followers... That's when I made my, that's when I made, that's when I left my job. I thought I can actually live with my business. That was 3,000 followers only at that time. People think you need to have 50 to 100,000. No, you don't. 
the benefits of social media is that it is free marketing. So put your face forward. It's free marketing. Put your confidence out. Only you know that that product that you are selling is the best product. No influencer can sell that for you. No matter how much money you pay them, no influencer can be genuine enough to show your consumers how brilliant your product is. So that's the benefit of social media. You have that under control when you talk directly to your followers. That's so true, Amina. But uh, now let's stick with this point now because I want to get one lesson at a time. You're yes. saying that nobody can sell your product. You are the one in charge to sell your product. Now, here is another point which I have realized while working with my community. Many times women uh, feel a little bit uh, embarrassed to talk about themselves, feel mm. a little bit like uh, that imposter syndrome thinking mm. like, uh, oh, uh, maybe I'm not in the right room, I'm not in the right place, and I'm not good enough, something mm. else that they also brought to the, to the list. And many times I have realized they don't want to talk about themselves. Mm. So how did you overcome that especially when we come from a culture where um mm. yeah you 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 have to know your corner you, you have to know your place and people <laughs> have been trying to put you down how do you overcome that culture so i come from a pakistani culture so for me as a girl i'm a girl so remember in in my culture there were boys boys are superior girls are like you know get married look after your husband that's what I grew up with that's the mentality my parents had and I broke out from that so I never had the full confidence as someone in a you know go get your grades you know kind of parents or you know what did you do today what exam did you do today I didn't come from that background so I was my own cheerleader so yes massive imposter syndrome massively thinking oh do they even want to hear about me I thought to myself look Amina if you want to make it big and you want to be successful, that is in your hands, no one else's hands. No one's going to come to you and say, I'm going to pass this business over to you. I'm going to give you these top tips and you're going to go be successful. No, it was in my own hands. I had to overcome that. Because that you come you come across those feelings quite a lot in business, actually, to be honest, you do. You feel like you need some kind of validation from people, but you don't. The only person that validate you is you and your business. And that is that. Once you start seeing it grow, that is validation. That's so true. And sometimes it takes time to realize that why have I been worried so much for things that don't matter? Okay. The only thing that really matters is you mm -hmm. and how you are going to give yourself that uh, that ownership and that, that power is by uh, creating that independence from others and by creating something that... Uh, follows your dream follows your path it's aligned with what you always wanted to do it makes you happy it makes you excited so uh it i know sometimes it's not easy to to kind of separate and uh, fall apart from the past but if you put yourself into the right environment like in this case for example you're in the right environment you are surrounded by like-minded women and yeah. listening to a story which is a great story a great example now uh this determination and this mindset and uh this these values that you have created for you amina also has opened so many doors for you now tell us a little bit more how did you end being selected for the apprentice bbc <laughs> apprentice this year um so yeah, with, with right. So I started my business in 2020. I started with two thousand pound savings, and that's the only thing I had because I had no job at the time. I left my job. I said, "I'm going to be my own boss. I don't want to be working under anyone." That is that. So my husband kept putting my CV up on Indeed because he was worried that we had a mortgage to pay. I said to him, "Please stop doing that because I know this business is going to work. Just have faith in me, please." Okay. He now works for me. Actually, <laughs> so oh, well done to you. Yeah, he left his pharmacist job and now he works here with the business. So that's brilliant. So um, when when I, I I start, you know, building the business, it was really tough. I was failing. I was winning. You know, it was a mixture of feelings, roller coaster emotions. Time went past. I had a baby at the same time. I had a C-section. It was an emergency C-section, so I had to recover. Um, so I kept building the business. And then 
the first year I did well. The second year we went down a bit because I was pregnant. Obviously, as a woman, I'm a face of my brand. I went, I took a step back. In the third year, I went full steam ahead. And then I saw the applications for the apprentice to come up. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to apply for this. Went to the auditions. The first question they ask you, you have 30 seconds. Why do you want to be Lord Trucker's business partner? And I was, and they, put, they lined 10 of you up. And I said, whatever I said in 30 seconds, they said, okay, you're through and you're through. Next stage. We had about 12, 13 auditions. One of the advisors of Lord Sugar was sitting there in one of the stage stages. And he said, you have a brilliant business here. How did you start that from zero to making half a million pounds in your first year to half a million pounds almost second year? And then in your third year, you've doubled that now. And you've had no overhead, like you've had no staff, no team, no marketing costs. You've just done it all in house. I mean, I can even show you my table in front of me right now. That's what I work from. And did you um, tell them social media? I said social media. And I said to my marketing was social media and my face. I was the face of the brand. I pumped that content that there was no business. There was no tomorrow. Kept pumping, kept pumping once a day, twice a day. And that was my marketing. Social media equals free marketing. That's what people need to understand. People want, do you know what it is? People want to have, they want to accelerate. They want to accelerate the process and that's where people go wrong. Once you accelerate the process, that means you're paying for your marketing. That's not genuine marketing. I mean, that's fine if you want to do that. You could do that alongside doing your own marketing, but no one does it better than you do it. So, yeah, I got into the... I, I, the Lord Trigger's advisor absolutely loved me. He was like, you know, you have a great personality as well. You know, we'd love you for the show. Your business is doing great. Um, and that is how I got into the show because he was impressed by where I started to where I got to without paying for, like, without just doing social media, really. Wow, I love your story, Amina, and and your personality as well. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, it's something that tells a lot about you. But also, I think you feel more confident as you start seeing some results. And yes. as you said, the results are not coming the first day or the first week or the first month. And that's why people give up very quick because they expect results overnight. So yes. you have to go through some tests. You exactly. because you have to show up even when you have three likes. You have to show up even nobody is showing interest on in your video. You have to keep going on and on and on. And and maybe and maybe they're right. Maybe there is nothing interesting in your video. Not the first week. Maybe not the second week. But uh, by the end of uh, month two or month six, there is something really that uh, is attracting them because you have learned a lot. And you remind me this. Um, amazing uh, 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 quote that I really love. It's like, maybe you start a journey and you want to arrive somewhere, somewhere. But when you arrive, the point, it's not arriving. The point is, who have you become on that journey? It's yeah. not the destination. It's the person you have become. And it's exactly what happened to me as well. When I, I remember when I started the very first time, I when Facebook announced life, because yeah. there was no life for a while. I mean, I remember I had just moved to this country. I think it was a year I have been here in this country. And um, we started uh, seeing that Facebook is added a feature, which is life. You can go live in Facebook. And I thought like, oh, I love that. I love that. But I, I I, don't think that's for me. Maybe one day I can do it. And I started do, going to these events um, to learn how to start a business or how to, to find a job or whatever. I just, I just wanted to be able to leave because I didn't have enough income to leave. And I was very hungry searching for an opportunity to be uh, out there and, and, and to be able not to go back. Uh, because I had burned my, my bridges. Mm. And there was a moment where I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. So I started doing these live videos. And my English, oh. I'm still, my English is, <laughs> is lots oh. of mistakes. But I'm telling you, if you think my English is not good enough right now, imagine 10 years ago. <laughs> it was horrible. So the way I'm coming here is like I started doing this every day and my friends started judging me because I was seen as a psychologist and a psychologist should not do this because this kind of social media at that time was not for um, for uh, serious people and professional people it was for 
like uh, worship, worship people. But mm. I kept doing it. So one of the friends who really judged me and she called me, she said, you should not do that. That's very embarrassing. You are a psychologist. This is not the way you do it. And she was so upfront with me. And I said, darling, you know what? If I'm embarrassing you because I'm your friend, there is a button which is called unfriend. And there is another button which is called block. So very easy. Just press that button, block me, and you do not need to see my videos anymore. Now, let me tell you, one, more, one year later, I kept doing it and I really improved a lot. I improved my English. I improved my social network. I improved many areas of my life. I remember I had a meeting with her in, a par in Regent's Park. And it was a beautiful birthday. And uh, immediately it came in my mind, it's time to do a live video. And I say to her, I said, darling, I know you don't like this stuff. This is for washy washy people. So how about you move a little bit because I want to do a live video. So don't worry, you don't need just two minutes. Just leave me two minutes. I'm going to do my video. I'll come back to you. So I started doing my video and then she slowly jumped in my video and she just came in, in front of my camera. And I said, okay, hi, everybody. By the way, this is my friend. She doesn't like this stuff. And I said, yeah but uh, it's okay. And I don't remember exactly what we said in that video, but what she did, she shared the video after and that video became so popular. And from that day, she never stopped doing live videos again. What I'm trying to say with this, these people who are judging you today, tomorrow, they are going to do exactly what you do.